Hey there, Worm People, Captain Matt here. We're gonna continue talking about breeding. The first, the first week we just looked at bedding, how to get your bedding set. Second week, we ended with feeding the worms. And I wanted to take you and show you how fast, how ferociously these worms eat. Now I fed them yesterday. Let's just pull this guy out. So we fed them yesterday. Holy smoke, there is nothing left in here. But what you're looking at is these clitellums are all loaded with eggs. Look at this guy here. Uh, uh, look at this guy here. I mean, these guys are fat. Look at this one over here. Look at this one over here. And if we look closely, we'll see them breeding. There's probably five or six on top worms breeding. And if we look real closely, we'll, if we look, we'll see some cocoons also. There's a cocoon. These are cocoons just sitting on top. Here's a cocoon over here sitting on top. Here's a cocoon sitting on the top. Now that's really amazing that you have that many on top. These, these guys are, they are now ready to be strained or, or to be separated. And they, this thing is loaded with cocoons. This is three weeks old, so we are ready to deal with this now. And we're, we could separate it or we could put it in a nursery, as I call it, the big nursery. But then if you look at the dates, I have the, next week we have another row. The entire row is uh, dated the same date. Next, tomorrow, I will take this entire row and deal with it. And then the third row is October the 9th. We'll have this row. It, it's really interesting. Here we have one bin with 500 worms in it. And once we set, set it and put the 500 worms in, we leave them for three weeks because immediately the worms are dropping cocoons and we have 21 days to 28 days somewhere in there before those cocoons hatch. So we can leave them together with the adult worms, the cocoons for three weeks. But after three weeks, you definitely want to se separate the adult worms from the cocoons because it's really hard separating brand new babies. You kill most of them. Uh, the whole idea is separate them before they hatch. But the decision is this, how am I going to separate them or how am I going to deal with them? And there are different ways to do it. We could uh, sift them out and separate the worms from the bedding and the cocoons. Hatch the cocoons separately and start up uh, a new bin with the worms. And we use this, we use a, a sifter here and we just put it on and we just start to shake it and all the cocoons and the bedding goes down into a new bin and the worms stay up top and we move those over. Now, the problem with that is that we are using such a high density of moisture that there is no way we can sift them like that. Now, another way of dealing with it is we separate the worms from the bedding using lights. And we have a video out also for that where we took six bins, set lights up on top, the worms go down, and we start removing the soil from around the worms. And we get them to a point where we have the soil and the cocoons ready to go into a hatchery or another bin to hatch. And then we take the worms and start them up again in a new cycle. But tonight we've chosen not to do either of those. The third choice is this, I like breeder nurseries. And so this bin here, which is eight foot long by 30 inches wide, this is now designated as our nursery. For me, it's a combination of things. My time gets really, really tight and to separate the worms by light is a, is a process and it takes a lot of time. But it's very easy for me to take the contents of this bin with the cocoons and with the adults and bring them and put them in the nursery. Matter of fact, we're gonna do that this week. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to take all six bins and I'm gonna take them and put them in a prepared bedding. So there's plenty of bedding for them. And I'm gonna put them over here, cover them, keeping them at the right moisture, right temperature, plenty of food. And we're gonna hatch all the little ones over here because I don't have to know how many and I don't have to have them separated. Over six months, we are gonna produce thousands and thousands of worms that started as a cocoon and turned into mature worms. And it's a wonderful, wonderful process. So all we basically do, and I'm gonna do it for you to show you how simple it is. We'll take the cover off, okay? And we're gonna now, and if you look again, they are still in breeding mode after three weeks. They would stay and they would keep laying cocoons, 
But the problem is we got to get them moving because these cocoons are going to hatch. And so I want to get them all into the nursery. Jude and I will take it over here and we can just take it right about the middle, Jude, and just, just as gently as we can, we'll wiggle that down and we're going to just literally dump that in. Now, let me spread this around a little. If you would just back up a touch, Jude, just get some of the worms up here. Just spread these guys around and we're going to come back give them a little bit of food because they just finished eating tomorrow i'll give them a, a little more of the food and so we're going to leave them right there and we'll simply uh, just cover them right up and leave them there and those cocoons are going to hatch in there with the adults you say well what about those adults matt what, you, you don't have any worms for the, for the bin to reset the bin I do, I have plenty of worms over in the other bins and I'll go over and pull out a handful, weigh them out and start it all over again with a pound here in fresh bedding. Start the whole process over three weeks later. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring them in here. For the next few months, we're gonna use these 18 bins and we're just gonna keep continue to cycle them. Each bin, we will be looking at approximately 15 hundred cocoons and the adults going in here we're forming a whole new herd in this bin that is going to grow and multiply exponentially after about four or five months this is just going to be a swarm of worms in here i hope it's been helpful to you guys again i've simplified the process and if you're serious about breeding you're going to have to do some studying about, uh, on this someone corrected me about my measurement on this bin and I want to thank you. I said this is two and a half square feet and it actually measures three square feet. So we could have put as many as 600 worms in here and been pretty satisfied with the fact that we'd have massive reproduction going on. So folks, thank you so much. I read up on this. We gave you the basics and those basics are really what it takes to real heavy duty, fast reproduction of red wigglers. All right, folks, thanks so much for being with us again tonight. I hope these three uh, videos have helped you out a whole bunch. God bless you, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Have a great week.